Hello, my name is Kate James. I'm a cataloger and a former member of the RDA Steering Committee. This video is about RDA entities. This video is the first in a new series called RDA Concepts that I'm doing for the Toolkit YouTube channel. So I wanted to give you some caveats about this video series. These are going to be short introductory videos. You won't be able to catalog anything using RDA after watching these videos. There are more in-depth videos available on the Toolkit um, YouTube channel and on the RSC website. Please check those out. Because these are short videos, I'm going to be generalizing and I might leave out some information about a concept that you think is really important and I apologize in advance for that. So back to entities in RDA. Entities is a concept that RDA took from the conceptual models upon which it is based. New RDA is based upon the IFLA LRM. LRM stands for Library Reference Models. So entities are a useful way of categorizing the stuff that people are interested in looking for in library catalogs. And LRM um, took the concept of entity from the previous models that it consolidated called the FR models, um, functional requirements model like Ferber, I'm sure you've heard of. Let me show you what the definition of entity is in RDA. Here we go. Okay, entity is an abstract class of a physical or conceptual thing in the universe of human discourse. This is a very broad definition. You might be thinking, well, it sounds like anything and everything is an entity. You would be absolutely right. Um, broadly speaking, yes, but then when we talk about RDA entities, it's much more specific because again, we're focused on information that users are looking for in library catalogs and catalogs of similar cultural heritage institutions. So these are the entities that are defined in RDA. There's 13 of them. Some of these came directly from LRM, work, expression, manifestation item. Some of these are not in LRM specifically like family. However, LRM has the entity collective agent. And if you were to read about collective agent, you would see that it's very clear that a family is a type of collective agent. So RDA has done a natural extension of LRM in defining the entity family. This entity, RDA entity, is also not an LRM. And this is a little confusing um, terminology wise because notice this capital E here. So this is a specific entity. I might also talk about any of these things as being an RDA entity or RDA entities being all of these things. But when I say RDA entity with a capital E, I mean this specific entity. And here's uh, the definition of that. As you can see, it's a very broad level entity that encompasses all of the more specific ones. So anything that's a person is an RDA entity. Anything that's a place is an RDA entity. Anything that's a work is an RDA entity. This is very useful um, when doing you know, hierarchies for elements and entities in RDA. It's useful in modeling and it can also be useful on a practical level if you have a bunch of old legacy data that you wanted to convert to RDA. It might be difficult for you to map it to specific entities like family and item, but you might be able to map it to RDA entity and convert your data to RDA without having to um, spend a lot of time thinking about that. So we have all of these entities available. These are abstract concepts, but when I want to get specific, I talk about an instance of an entity. So person entity is just a, a broad class, but William Shakespeare, the playwright, the author of Hamlet, he's an instance of the person entity. Similarly, I could say that Hamlet is an instance of the work entity. Now, you will hear people talking about RDA and they'll just say, William Shakespeare's a person or William Shakespeare's a person entity. It, that's shorthand for saying what I just said about William Shakespeare's an instance of the person entity. That's a, a long mouthful. So, um, you know, it's, uh, 
it, it's perfectly fine to use the shorthand and just say William Shakespeare is a person and we know what you mean by that. You might also hear the term class when used to describe RDA entities and I wanted to show you where that comes from. This is the RDA registry. It's an external website and it contains uh, a lot of the data that's used in the RDA toolkit. So as you can see that it's just basically a linked data representation of the same information that's in the RDA itself. So this is classes. And I'll show you. These labels should look pretty familiar to you. Work, item, person. So if you wanted to say um, that work is a class or work is an entity, it really means the same thing. It's just two different terms to describe the same concept. So that's where that comes from. Another concept that's very important when discussing RDA entities are elements. Now, elements are what we use to describe entities. I like to think of it as RDA entities are the things and then elements are the tools we use to describe the things. That's all I'm going to say about elements at the moment because I have a separate video prepared about elements. Please watch that if you are interested in learning more. Thank you very much for tuning in.